Hi everyone, my name is Lu Shenming. I'm now working at Dance and mainly focusing on virtualization related projects. Today I will show my topic Deep Optimization of VMM Live Upgrade. It will be divided into five parts. First, I will introduce the background. VMM Live Upgrade is an efficient way to upgrade the VMM software, Cumulus and KVM, to a new version without interrupting the guest. It can be used to add critical bug fix and new features to the VMM. It is well known that the service downtime of live upgrade is a major concern of cloud providers. Also, live upgrade has done much better than live migration and uses less resources. But in some cases, especially for large virtual machines, the total downtime can be as long as several seconds, which is obviously unacceptable for sensitive applications. So we take efforts to further minimize live upgrade downtime. Before that, I will introduce our basic VMM live upgrade framework. First, we will fork and then execute to load a new commute binary so that we can inherit any FD from the old commute, including memory FD. And by this, we don't need we don't need the iterative memory copy. This picture also shows the flow path of live upgrade, which is similar to live migration. First, load a new commute and do the initialization. When finished, notify the old commute to suspend the guest, which is the start point of the downtime. You need to suspend. It will pause the VCPUs and stop and stop the devices, and then save and load the device state in parallel in the old and new queue. We will use shared memory to sync and transfer device state between the old and new to optimize the downtime. Finally, the new queue gets the full VM state and start up. It's the end of the downtime. We also divide the KVM module into multiple duplicated modules, which can be loaded simultaneously. Thus, we can upgrade KVM by loading new KVM modules. The Occupy KVM module will not be overloaded, and then migrate VMs from the old one to the new one. In order to do the op optimization, we should analyze the downtime of live upgrade first. This picture shows the breakdown of the downtime of a VM, which has 64 vCPUs, 256 GB memory, one multiple vHost user net device, and two multiple vHost user block devices. The load is in the old commute, mainly consists of VM, VM stop and VM state C. The up is in the new commute, mainly consists of VM state load and VM start. We can see the main time costs are the host user devices stop and start, respectively, in VM stop and VM start. Then, device state transfer also takes some time. Then, I will introduce our optimizations. Now, we have known the hottest spots, and the most direct question is, is it necessary or efficient to stop and start devices and transfer device state by directly 
when using the live migration framework. Accumulate internal emulated devices. Yes, we still needed the process, but the number of them are usually limited. Limited, and the time costs are relatively small. But for external devices, such as we host user devices, whose data pass a little VML intervention, it is unnecessary and can be optimized. Let's take we host user devices, FDK and SPDK for example. As we said before, we can inherit any FD from the old community by using no close X curve flag. So here, for Vehos user devices, we inherit channels, um, specifically main channels and slave channels, and shared FDs, mainly cake and co-FDs, and in-flight FDs of SPDK between the VMM and the Vehos user backend. Then, we will use them directly in the in the old in the new queue and escape the related init processes. After inheriting the FDs, we can make VMM live upgrade transparent to the host user backend. First, don't stop the backend in the old queue, just keep it running. Second, Skip all, skip all set communications, such as set memory table, set viewing number, address, set features, and so on. And also some get communication, meaning get viewing base and get in flight FD. We skip these communications to the back ends in the new queue. By this, the back, the back ends are unaware of in live upgrade. What's more, there are some issues worth noting. First, since the backends are keeping running and may trigger interrupts via code FDs even after the guest has paused, then the new KVM may miss the interrupts, which are received and pending in the old KVM. Our solution is simply supplement interrupts unconditionally when finishing the lab. Life upgrade. Second, if the backends crash or send a state messages to the must, it is uncertain which community will receive the messages and cause the mess. To avoid this, we limit the new communities to start to listen on the slave channel only when finishing the upgrade. And if and if there is any backend crash or slave request, just fill this upgrade. As far as I know, slave channel is rarely used in DDK or SPDK. Also, crash is rare. So, this method will have little influence on the success rate. Third, since we don't upgrade the memory table during live upgrade, there will be still memory table date in the backend. To solve it, we can still do the update, but without additional effect, such as backend, backend restart, or we can unmap the guest web at a fixed and very high address. With above optimization, and since the vertical related state in the data plane is kept in the guest and backends. There is no need to transfer this state from the old to new. Except the data plane state reversed is mainly the config state, which is much much less changed during the life during the VM lifetime. So we can pre-transfer it before VM pause. And keep and keep a track of the config change right before the pre-transfer, so that if any change occurs, we can retransfer the config state after pause as before.
By this, we can skip the state transfer of vehicles user devices within the downtown with high probability. Yeah, vehicles user is one important case, but our optimizations can also be applied to VFL, vehost, and so on in a similar manner. And even for QVM, we can add a, we can add a mode named Humu Upgrade Unit, in which we will inherit the QVM FDs and escape the related init processes in the new QVM. Thus, there is no need to sync the VCQ state from the old QVM, transfer it, and put it back to the new QVM. They can be skipped. By this, we can make the only live upgrade more lightweight. <clears throat> Finally, go to the experiments. And I will show the effect of our optimizations. First, we have compared we have compared the downtimes with and without our optimizations on the three workloads, idle, CPU strength, and FIO. In this picture, the left is a relatively small VM, which has 16 vCPUs, 64 GP memory, with, with one multiple vehost user net device, device and two multiple vehost user block devices. And the right is a large VM, which has 64 vCPUs, 256 GB MEM with two NAT devices and 10 block devices. We can see the downtime of small VM has fallen by about 80%, and for large VM, the downtime has fallen over 90%, dramatically dropped from about one second to only 17 microseconds. Besides, we can see that after optimization, there is almost no increase in the downtime when under the FIO workload compared to idle. We also measured the effect of our optimizations on packet loss. In this picture, the lab is the pin result before optimizations, and the right is after optimizations. We can see that before optimizations, we will lose about 40 packages just in one upgrade, and the max latency is over two seconds, much higher than the VCPU downtime should just now. And after optimizations, there is no any packet loss and the latency is close to the VCPU downtime, about 19 microseconds. Okay. That's all. Thanks. If you have any question for this topic, you can also contact me with this email. Thank you.